Hello, interweb. I am D Quigs, and in today's episode of Godot Blitz Tutorial, we're going to be discussing how to add ad mob into your Godot Android games in order to make ad revenue. There's a couple prerequisites you want to go ahead and handle before continuing with the tutorial. The main thing is you do want your app listed in a compatible Play Store. So here's like, here is for example, my apps on my Google Play Store. And you also want to have your Google AdMob account set up and ready to go. Uh, you won't look like mine. You don't have to have anything set up uh, app wise yet. I can walk you through that. However, you do want to have it set up and ready to go. And there is one thing to note about your Google Play listing is that it will take about 24 to 48 hours after your approval for it to show up in the app store and be searchable. So keep that in mind as your app does need to be searchable in order to add it to Google AdMob. So the first thing we need to do in order to get you ready on the project side of things is to go ahead and open your project file. And we want to install the Android custom build template. So you go to project, install Android build template. It's gonna ask you to confirm. Just go ahead and click install and wait for it. All right, next you'll want to search for or use the link in the description to access the Shin Nil Godot Android AdMob plugin. So I'm gonna paste the link and jump straight to his releases. And once here, I'm gonna go ahead and download the latest version, this 5.0. Save it to somewhere so you can access it easily. At this point, close out your project file. You can probably leave it open, but you'll have a little bit of bugs and you'll probably end up having to restart it anyway. So go ahead and close down Godot. And then you want to open in your Explorer, whether you're on Linux or Windows, you want to open up your project folder. Once you're in your project's root folder, you want to go to the Android folder and then into the plugins. Once you get the AdMob plugin downloaded, go ahead and open it up and extract all the contents over into somewhere easily accessible. So you can pull that up, uh, the contents of that as well as the contents of your source code at the same time. So I am just gonna extract this into my development folder. So we need to copy all the contents of the AdMob plugin folder into the Android plugins folder in your project root file. From the root, we go to Android, then we go to plugins, then we just hit paste. Next up, go back to where you extracted your AdMob contents. You should find the entire AdMob lib folder, copy that, and go ahead and paste that directly into the root folder of your project. Once that's done, we're good to go ahead and enter back into Godot and start adding AdMob into our project. Once you're back into your project, you now see you have your AdMob lib folder. But more importantly, when you go to hit plus right here, you type in AdMob, you now have an AdMob resource. You want to add that to a point in your project that's going to be always running when you want your ads to be shown. For example, in this current project, I have a start menu that phases out, so it's not a really good place to put it. I'm just going to put it onto my main gameplay menu. So from here, in my main, I'm going to hit add, add mob, create, and we have the add mob node now. Now we have all these settings here, which we'll use to actually set up and display our ads. In order to add an app into your add mob account, we'll go to apps, click it, hit add app, It'll ask you what platform it's on. In this case, we'll choose Android. And then it'll ask you if it's on a supported app store. Of course, you click yes, click next. And this is where you search for it in Google Play. And I don't think mine will show up, or actually it does. And we can see that mine is already added, but you would click yours when you find it and then hit continue. Once you have your app added, you want to click apps and then click the app that you just added. And then we need to go into add units and click add add unit. From here, you'll be able to create the ad that you want to add into your game. For most games, that's just going to be a banner ad. So we hit select, we give it a name, hit create add unit, and now we have our codes. The first code is your app ID, and that needs to be put into your Android manifest XML. 
This is going to be used only once. Once you add it once into your Android manifest, even if you add more ads to that game, such as an insert situational or rewarded, etc., you don't have to add this code ever again into your Android manifest. It's a one and done. From here, we need to copy this. We need to get this code into the Android manifest of your project file. So what's easiest to do is just to go ahead and highlight it, copy it, click mobile ads SDK guide, scroll on down to this section here, and you can just click this and paste your code into that. Once that's done, all we need is this right here. So highlight that and hit copy. Then pull up your Android manifest from your project root folder. So we'll go to your project root folder and Android, then build and then Android manifest. Then you want to edit that. You can just scroll all the way on down right above slash application and you can paste that in. Now I would like to make this a little bit nicer looking. Let's pull this open. All right. So now I'm just going to line stuff up uh, like that. So I tab that out once and that's just going to make me feel better. I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary. Once that is done, you can go ahead and save that. Close out your manifest. Go back to your AdMob account. And now this is your banner ad implementation code. We can highlight that and hit copy. And we're done here. So you can click done if you'd like. Close this out if you'd like and enter back into your Godot project. Now, this is the banner ID. So what we would do is enter that here. So now our ads are all set up to be utilized, but we want to implement and test it. In order for the ad to be shown, we have to call the function to load the ad and then the function to show the ad. Now, while we're here, there are a couple things to note. We have is real. This is off by default, and that's for testing purposes. When you deploy your app and actually want to have your monetized ads running, you want to ensure that is clicked and that's true. But for now, we're gonna leave that off so we can test this. A banner on top, uh, is its initial load position for your banner, whether you want it at the top of the frame or at the bottom of the frame or the viewport. Banner size, you can play around with that. I just leave that as adaptive banner. Seems to work well enough for me. Uh, banner ID is what we copy and pasted. Enter situational and rewarded would be other codes depending on your ad type that you'd like to utilize. Now child directed, I, you need to enable that if your app is designed primarily for kids so that you stay within the legal limitations of, you know, advertising to children. Is personalized, uh, turning that on and off. In the EU, I believe you're supposed to have that off by default. Um, not 100% sure on that but is personalized, that delivers personalized ads, which definitely generates you more revenue. Uh, but there are laws in the EU concerning uh, personalized ads. And then finally, your max ad content. This is gonna be your content rating. You want this to match up with your content rating provided to you by like Google Play or whatever app store, basically ESRP or whoever does the ratings in your country. When you do a Google Play app, you do have to take a questionnaire, answer it truthfully, and they'll give you, you know, your app store rating. And just ensure that this is equal to or less than that. For example, you know, if you're rated T for teens, you can go up to T, but you can't go to MA, um, or you're gonna have policy issues. And finally, the implementation. Now the last two steps for most of these ads, especially an inter-situational or banner ad, is you do need to load them first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write a reference to my ad mob node. So I'm just gonna do on ready var ad mob equals ad mob. And when we ready up, I'm gonna tell ad mob to load banner. We'll do ad mob load banner and ad mob show banner. So the next thing is make sure we go into our project export like Android. We want to make sure we have use custom build enabled and plugins Godot ad mob checked as well. And after you save that, plug in your Android device, you'll get the Android icon up here to deploy. We're gonna deploy our app. And we should see when I hit start, it take a second, we should get it to load up. I think it's gonna load up at the top. And bam, there we go. So this loaded up at the top because I have banner on top. So if I go ahead and close this out, I'm going to click banner on top, disable that. 
then redeploy. All right, and now that banner on top is disabled, we're gonna hit start and we'll see the coins dropping here in any second now. Bam, test ad pops up at the bottom. And that's how you do it. Now to finalize, turn off is real. So click is real, make it real. It's personalized, max content, whatever you wanna set it at. So as long as your test ads are working, then you know everything coded is, is right and you just have an issue with either this or your app ID and your Android manifest. So that's how you add AdMob to your apps made with Godot. If you found that interesting, if you uh, helped you out, go ahead and give this video a like. I would really appreciate a subscribe. I do live streams, twitch.tv slash dquigs. Uh, join the Discord, link in the description. I think my next video hopefully will probably be on Firebase implementation unless somebody else has a better idea, I'll leave it in the comments. I have been DQuigs, this has been Godot Blitz Tutorial. I appreciate you. Catch you next time. Peace.